I can use Hatch to fill an enclosed area with a selected hatch pattern or I could use a fill such as a solid color or a gradient fill. My hatch patterns generally represent materials or they represent certain drawing standards and they are available in pre-drawn hatch patterns inside AutoCAD. Here's an example. In this elevation of this cabin we can see we've used a hatch pattern to represent wood siding on the side of the house, bricks on the chimney, or shingles or shakes on the roof. Or in the case of this mechanical part, you notice that this is a section and I've used a hatch pattern to represent the cut edge of my section view. Before I use the hatch command, I need to have an enclosed boundary area that I can fill with either a hatch pattern or with a fill. Once I have a boundaried area, then I can either activate a hatch from the tool panel, I can type in hatch from the keyboard, or I can enter its keyboard alias H. What shows up is my hatch and gradient dialog box. We'll look at hatch first. First the type and pattern. We have predefined hatches uh, that come already uh, available inside AutoCAD and these predefined can be picked by their name or we can visually search and look through. We have ANSI. Uh, these are uh, defined standard hatches that are used to represent different materials or I have other predefined and you can pick out hatches here you can see that some of them rep will represent a variety of materials and I also have uh, a solid fill that I can use. We're just going to use the default ANSI 31 which is a diagonal hatch pattern. Now down here I can set the angle and I can set the scale of the fill. In this case uh, we'll set this back to 1. I have my hatch origin this is the spot where the hatch is calculated from. So it starts filling by default in the lower left corner. If the pattern doesn't look right to you, uh, starting it from this orientation, you can specify a different origin for the hatch pattern. Here I have tools to help me deal with boundaries. And we're going to start with add pick points. So I'm going to click here and it wants me to click inside of my boundaried area. When I click once inside you notice that it sends out rays and finds all of the boundaries. Once I have it uh, defined and I can pick more than one boundaried area, I can hit enter and come back and if I can preview what I'm going to see. In this case my uh, hatch pattern is a little bit too tight. To fix that I'm going to go back by hitting enter and I'm going to adjust the scale. If I use a number that is larger than one then the hatch pattern will get larger. If I use a number less than one the hatch pattern gets smaller. I can pick off of this drop down or I can just enter from the keyboard I'm going to enter a scale of five and now I'll preview again. Okay, that looks closer to what I want. So I'm going to hit enter and go back and I'll say okay. Another choice I have would be to fill a boundary area with a color. I could fill it with a solid color by hatching it with a solid and changing that solid to a different color. Or if I click on my hatch, you know this notice in the dialog box I have a tab so that I can tab between hatch and gradient. But also in my draw tool panel, I have a button for gradient. And what gradient's going to do is fill the enclosed area with a color that has transitions between shade of one color or shades between two colors. So it's a it's a very sophisticated 
uh, kind of coloration. So let's take a look at how it works. Right now, you can see that the tools for picking your point inside your boundary area are the same as working with Hatch, and that as the associative or properties are activated. I can choose my color here by going to my color chart and I can adjust those colors or I can go to my color books which would be like going down to the paint store and you see all your different variety of colors and then we have the ability to with one color to create positives and negatives. So here I have uh, light colors blended in. Here I have pretty much just solid colors and now I'm blending in kind of black. That's with one color. With two colors I could add in another color and you see that I'm substituting for that second color. So let's pick this one. And now notice how the gradients you have all these different choices. I can have uh, my accent in the middle. I can have a reverse of it. I can have one color at the top, another color at the bottom, and I have that gradual change in between the two. So let's pick a point. We're going to pick this object again. We'll go ahead and preview, and you can see what the result is. My gradient color changes gradually from one color to the other in the direction of the box that I chose. Uh, if I wanted to choose a different one, then you can see how that gradient would play out. When I find what I want, I say OK, and it fills it with a gradient color. My gradient color acts as one unit. If I click, you see I just get one grip. Just like my hatch, uh, they both work in similar ways.